everyone, and welcome to Suggestive Gaming's In Retrospect, where we examine a game or franchise that you may have missed and take a deeper look at its development, key figures involved, and its impact on the video game landscape. Today, we're going to take a look at the 1996 PC adventure game, Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Have you ever played a game that impacted you, really left an impression and touched your soul, but seemingly no one else ever heard of? I have a game like that. Growing up, I was a huge adventure game fan. Myst, The Seventh Guest, and even the LucasArts games were staples of my childhood. But there was another game I somehow got my hands on. It was called Titanic Adventure Out of Time. Released in 1996 by developer Cyberflix, Adventure Out of Time was created from an idea by writer-producer Andrew Nelson, who thought it would be a unique gameplay decision to race against the clock on a sinking ship. Thus, the Titanic was chosen, and the team went on to spend the next two years creating a historically accurate representation of the ship, even enlisting Apollo 13 screenwriter William Broyles Jr. to research and provide photographic references. Using Cyberflix's proprietary software Dream Factory, used in their previous titles such as Dust, A Tale of the Wired West, the team the team created a spy mystery thriller set on the Titanic where the player's actions throughout the story ended up affecting the future and potentially creating or preventing World War II. While Titanic Adventure Out of Time sold well enough to exceed Cyberflix's expectations, especially with the bump of popularity given by James Cameron's 1997 film Titanic, the game didn't become big enough to stand out above the many other PC adventure games of the time. It then fell into obscurity, abandoned by its publisher, and only very recently, in December of 2017, finally becoming available to purchase and play by modern means on GOG.com and later Steam. So let's take another look at one of the defining games of my childhood and see how it stands up. Titanic Adventure Out of Time sees you, the player, taking on the role of Frank Carlson, a British secret agent who was tasked with preventing a painting containing hidden war plans from being obtained by German operatives aboard the RMS Titanic. Frank survived the ship's sinking, but had failed his original mission, leading to World War I and II and the eventual bombing of London. However, during the bombing, Frank is somehow sent back in time, with his memories intact, to have a second chance at his mission. In a somewhat ambitious move for a game at the time, Titanic lays out several tasks and optional side stories for the player to complete, some affecting the main story and ending while others simply exist only to learn more about the ship's vast cast of characters. Because the story is told somewhat in real time, the player must choose which paths to take and which of the 32 unique characters to meet and help. These characters might come back later to return the favor, so the player must manage their time effectively to get everything done before the ship sinks. With six different endings and the aforementioned time management mechanic, Titanic Adventure Out of Time has a massive amount of replayability. I've personally been playing it for over 20 years and still find new events and character dialogues that I've never seen before. And that's what keeps me coming back after all these years. With so many different combinations and permutations, it's extremely fun to go back and see what butterfly effect doing one small task differently will take, not only on the rest of the game's events, but on the game's alternate take on world history. While the dire circumstances hang over your head, the game does a great job of splitting the experience into two parts, before and after the iceberg. Before the ship strikes the iceberg that leads to its sinking, the player is able to freely explore the masterfully accurate ship, and meet the colorful cast of characters that inhabit it. The characters are played by real actors with photographic sprites instead of 3D models. This was due to hardware limitations at the time, and while it may rub new players the wrong way, to me this is almost more charming, barring some strange facial animations. What? Looking and speaking to a real person helps the immersion in a game that otherwise shows its age all over. The game doesn't allow the player to be comfortable for that long, however. After the player progresses the story to a certain point, they are met with a standoff with the game's main antagonist, Colonel Zytel, when suddenly the inevitable happens, the Titanic hits an iceberg and begins to sink. From there, the game drastically shifts tone, and the player is tasked with completing their mission before the final lifeboat leaves, giving them about an hour to wrap things up. This creates a frenetic and anxious final act, with the player trying to wrap up their loose ends and say their goodbyes to the characters they've met along their journey, as well as obtain the critical items they need to succeed in their mission. As a kid, I missed a lot playing this game. With so many pathways and characters that make up your journey, it was extremely hard to keep track of everything as a youngster. Playing it throughout the years, however, I'm now familiar with every little subplot and puzzle piece. While modern games give you hours upon hours worth of gameplay with huge worlds and stories, it's rare to find something that's set in such a confined space yet is so vast in its ambitions. Another thing I'd love to note here is the game's atmosphere and how well it pulls it off. Between the faithful reconstruction of the ship's decor, as well as the characters' outfits, accents, and general demeanors, you really feel like you have been teleported back to the Titanic's maiden voyage in 1912. Even walking around the ship alone can give you chills. 
Since the game takes place at night, walking around the ship's deck illuminated by the moonlight while listening to the amazing classically inspired soundtrack and terrific sound design put you right there, even with the game's extremely low resolution. Picking up the game and playing it today is just as intriguing and interesting as it was 20 years ago. Playing through again for this video, I found new paths and outcomes even after thinking I had it all figured out. The game plays quickly, you can get through it in a couple hours once you know how to navigate the ship, so multiple playthroughs are heavily encouraged and different outcomes are hinted at by different characters. Blast. Someone got there before you. If only you'd been faster. In my opinion, the game still holds up as an extremely enjoyable experience, especially for the low cost you can get it for on modern digital marketplaces. Unfortunately, after the release of Titanic, Cyberflix released only one more game, the pirate-themed Red Jack Revenge of the Brethren in 1997. After only selling about 1% of the amount of copies Titanic sold, the company's further projects were halted and the studio folded in 1998. While Titanic Adventure Out of Time didn't go on to leave a widespread legacy among the PC adventure game landscape, it did achieve a cult fandom, leading to various fan sites and petitions for a re-release. The game also inspired various other Titanic-based projects, such as Titanic Honor and Glory, a game whose team is striving to create the most historically accurate representation of the ship ever. I definitely recommend you go check this project out, and if you have an HTC Vive or Oculus Rift, go see what the ship looks like in virtual reality. As someone who prior to this game had no interest in the Titanic or the history surrounding it, this game ignited a passion for the ship and its events. It's rare that a video game causes you to watch hours worth of documentaries or go to museums and various exhibits to see artifacts and relics of a historical event. But for me, that was Titanic Adventure Out of Time, a game that has stuck with me since the day I first played it. I only hope that if you've never tried it, this video will inspire you too, and hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Click that like button and subscribe for more if you haven't. Hit that bell too, maybe then YouTube will actually show us our videos if you're subscribed. Also, we are suggestive gaming after all, so leave a comment if there's an obscure game that you love that you'd like to see me cover on this series. Thanks again guys!